how many there were, the company could not count. The affray was sharp, but the orcs were dismayed by the fierceness of the defense. Legolas shot two through the throat. Gimli hewed the legs from under another that had sprung up on Balin's tomb. Boronir and Aragorn slew many. When thirteen had fallen, the rest fled, shrieking, leaving the defenders unharmed, except for Sam, who had a scratch along the scalp. If we picture this encounter from Fellowship of the Ring, in terms of something we might run at our gaming table, how would you handle the orcs? Of course, we could just handle them as individual creatures, but that doesn't always give the encounter the sort of shape or feel that we're looking for. We want them to be dangerous, but, as a group, easily dispatched. We want their danger to be about their numbers, not their individual abilities. If they are just the amuse-bouche to the cave troll lurking just off-screen, and then the balrog lurking behind it. We don't want them to overstay their welcome. We want them as fodder for our heroes. What we want are minions. A hireling, minion, or mook is a relatively low-threat creature, alone. But, in numbers, they can both threaten and preoccupy a party of adventurers, diverting resources they would rather spend on a single, major target. Formidable enough, as a group, to not be ignored, in a mechanical sense, they help balance an encounter to allow a major creature room to operate without being overwhelmed and stymied by coordinated attacks from the party. Hey, this is Todd. Let's talk about minions. I never saw a man fight as Conan fought. He put his back to the courtyard wall, and before they overpowered him, the dead men were strewn in heaps thigh-deep about him. But at last they dragged him down, a hundred against one. The concept of minion creatures is nothing new but the idea of a minion codified as a specific creature role with specific mechanics and rules associated with it came with 4th edition. 4th edition was big on classifying creature roles. It was an imperfect system, but it had great value in supplying at-a-glance shorthand on how a creature should play. In the case of the minion, they were killed immediately if they took direct damage, but otherwise, their attributes and abilities scaled upwards. This was a break from the Elder Days, when such creatures would have been limited to less than one hit die, what the rules called normal men, though it included creatures who were not, in any sense, normal. The need for mechanically supported minions arose because, as the power levels and the breadth of abilities available to player characters grew, certain styles of encounters became, from the Game Master's position, harder and harder to pull off. The single boss style monster encounter was affected most of all. If you've heard the term action economy thrown around, this is what they're talking about. Let's say that a party has, on average, five actions a turn and one attack each. A single creature might have one action a turn with three attacks. That puts the creature in a two attack deficit and four action deficit in every turn. Now compound this with character powers that immobilize, stun, or hamper their enemy, all focused on one creature the action disparity can easily spiral out of control, just from a single missed die roll. Adding minions as shock troops to absorb actions isn't the only possible answer to solving this issue, but it is a solution with support from the game's inspirational fiction source material, the type of stuff found famously in First Edition's Dungeon Master's Guide in Appendix N and elsewhere. Besides that, who doesn't get a visceral thrill from mowing down masses of mooks like so much grass? I'm not sure that 5th edition requires 4th edition style minions. This is because of another term that you may have heard, bounded accuracy. This just means that most of the numbers on both sides of 5th edition's mechanical equations, armor class, proficiency bonuses, target numbers, and the like, only rise within a restricted, limited band. This means the numbers never get totally out of reach. A low-level creature can still be dangerous, or at least damaging, to a high-level, well-protected player character. This leads us back to the original idea of the minion as a weak, but plentiful, disposable resource. Kobolds protecting a dragon as their living god. The hordes of skeletons and zombies animated by the will of a necromancer. Does your 5th edition game need minions? Much will depend on the sorts of encounters that you like to run. But, at some point, 
it's hard to resist the allure of an encounter with one powerful foe surrounded by their toadying cronies. The overhead that comes with tracking these extra combatants can be mitigated by applying the same one-hit kill concept from 4th edition, or treat them as a swarm or gang. In this mode, most of their normal abilities are subsumed by the mob status. Essentially, treat it as a single entity. Calculate or guesstimate things like number of turns, hit bonuses, and hit points based on the individual creature and the size of the mob. As the party hacks away at it, weaken its attack values and treat it in the fiction like a mass of creatures rather than a single entity. If you enjoy videos like these, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It helps me out a lot. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the show in a different way. Thanks for watching.